have been a number of protests at various facilities that are imprisoning and detaining migrant children and asylum seekers. And so the CEO of Geo Group, this is a for profit prison that runs and operates most of these facilities, is upset about these protests and actually sent out an internal email explaining to employees what's going on and how they're not the bad guys, they're actually the good guys. There's all sorts of myths about them. Now I'm gonna read from the actual email which TYT investigates obtained. Great reporting by Ken Klippenstein as always. And here's how it goes. George Zoli is the CEO who wrote this. On August 12th, 2019, our corporate office in Boca Raton was protested by Never Again Action. Never Again Action is a mobilization of different affiliated Jewish organizers whose goal is to shut down ICE. This new organization sprang up after Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez referred to ICE processing centers as concentration camps. Uh, so she was mentioned and she was blamed for these protests. But he doesn't go into the treatment of these migrants or the two dozen migrants who have died in these facilities. He doesn't talk about that at all. He just talks about AOC and how it's her fault that these protests are taking place. Uh, shown the Geo Group memo, a spokesperson for Never Again Action told TYT, direct action works. Damn right it does. I love it. I love the protesters, love them. They're so good. So more from the email, again, this is George Zoli from Geo Group. False narratives and deliberate mischaracterizations were the basis for these recent events. Misguided individuals intimidated our employees Ooh. and defamed the American flag at a time when we recently commemorated the birth of our nation and the 75th anniversary of our landing at Normandy. <laughs> okay, uh, that's hilarious. So. <laughs> These guys, you know, you've seen what happened never again. Action. One of the employees in one of the detention centers runs over them with a truck, right? And and then, of course, Republicans came out and started blaming the protesters, saying, "Well, I mean, what were they doing? You know, attacking that poor truck while sitting on the ground? They deserve to be run over and have their legs broken, etc." So now the guy's saying, "Can you believe that they are, you know?" Attacking the flag on the 75th anniversary of Normandy. Where did Normandy come from? We're talking about private prisons and detention centers and immigration. And he's like, and on the 16th anniversary of Arbor Day, can you believe they did this? What do you, what, what, where the hell did that come from? I mean, it's just so pathetic. And on, and on this 243rd day past Valentine's Day. <laughs> I can't believe that they would do this. Let alone the, how many anniversaries have there been of Mother's Day, and yet they have done this to the flag. What flag? Okay. What, I, and, By the way, they didn't. They didn't defame the flag. Of they course didn't. they didn't. The guy's <laughs> making everything up. Yeah. So the, apparently, uh, some protesters uh, had taken the American flag down, and he considered that defaming the American flag. Besides which, uh, two dozen people are dead because of these facilities and the fact that they've been brutalized and neglected in these facilities. Again, six of them were kids. So I mean, look, I get their hurt feelings over the American flag, but American lives are, or I should say lives should be more important. He doesn't want to talk about that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an obvious diversion tactic and never again action didn't do that anyway. Right. So he's taking talking about never getting action in AOC and then refers to a completely different protest where someone apparently took down an American flag. And they're like, oh, there's 12 people dead here. <gasps> Somebody took down the flag and right around the corner from Labor Day. Can you believe that? Ignore the dead people. Organizations that have threatened our employees or taken violent action against our company have also directly used the same terminology as Representative Ocasio-Cortez, including concentration camps. Look, these protesters are Jewish Americans. Many of them are Jewish Americans and so, they understand what concentration camps are, which is why they have sprung into action. So to blame everything on AOC and to use her as a scapegoat rather than taking personal responsibility for the brutalizing of, of migrants is ridiculous. And also a spokesperson said, quote, we don't play a role in passing criminal justice or immigration laws and we have never advocated for or against criminal justice or immigration enforcement policies. Uh. That is a flat out lie. Uh. For profit prisons in this country 
have, have not only pushed for tough on crime policies when it comes to undocumented immigrants. They have pushed for tough on crime policies when it comes to you, when it comes to me, when it comes to all Americans participating in nonviolent behavior like smoking pot. Okay, they have a long history of pushing for and imprisoning nonviolent drug offenders. And in the case of migrants, let me just note, Geo Group spends at least $1 million, $1 million each year uh, since 2016 lobbying federal government on issues like homeland security appropriations. In 2016, a Geo Group subsidiary contributed $225,000 to a pro Trump super PAC and an additional $250,000 for the president's inaugural committee. What happened to I, I would lobbying us? Well, golly gee, I've got the vapors. I would never do that, especially not on the 75th anniversary of Normandy. Okay, no, uh, Kenny Clips did a great job of not only finding the documents here, uh, but also giving you the context of uh, the fact that they in fact have done a ton of lobbying. So, and I wanna thank the audience as always. You made our reporting team possible. They keep breaking these stories one after another after another. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez then retweeted the story. That's got 30,000 likes on it. And now uh, being uh, looked at by all the media, etc. And you guys made that happen. Without you guys, we wouldn't have Jonathan Larson, Ken Klippenstein, or any of the reporters we've ever had. And I wanna say one last thing, which is doubling down on what Anna said. Guys, private prisons, have a profit motive to lock up Americans, right or wrong. It doesn't really matter as far as their profit motive is concerned. And they don't have a second code. Their only code is maximize profit. You know how that's how the markets work. So when you create a private prison, the only way to maximize profit is the more is to stuff more people in those prisons. And it, if the people in the prisons are guilty or innocent, who cares? You're still maximizing profit. In fact, if you're not pu pushing for laws that are quote unquote tough on crime, if you're not pushing to imprison more Americans, right or wrong, you should be fired as the CEO of that group because you're not maximizing profit. And, and so they logically, in this insane system that we have, pour in millions of dollars to buy corrupt, largely Republican politicians, and if any Democrat takes money from a private prison, they should immediately be primaried and ridden out of town and tarred and feathered, okay? And when they cry and say, oh, are you gonna ruin our industry where we get to lock up Americans for to make money? Yes. Goddamn right we are. We're gonna drive you right out of business so you can't lock up any more innocent Americans or any other people and have to treat them with this kind of outrageous, system and centers that you have. Yes, we will not allow you to make money off of imprisoning and taking our liberty away from us. Hell no. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com/join.